All right, so you sounding comfortable, at least you're sounding out a positive note on that. What about your exposure to another group which has been a point of worry, the SL group? So SL is, is completely captured in the, uh, uh, you know, the sub-investment grade book that we put. I think yes. you took out, you also mentioned a couple of other names, I think which was JET. Uh, JET, on 50% of the JET exposure, we took a provision in, in quarter yes. four. Uh, and we took it ahead of the market, hmm. and for the residual 50%, we will we will take that provision in in, in the ensuing quarter. Hmm. So there's nothing that you know we haven't put out there or or not disclosed. All right. So Jet, you yourself mentioned that, and you are going to provide a little. How could how big could be the amount as far as provisioning for Jet Airways is concerned? Because that deal is something that I am tracking also very very closely. Right. But there is no headway in that transaction. Yeah. So like I mentioned to you, the 50% of the Jet exposure we provided for in the fourth quarter, hmm. and the balance 50 person which we need to provide for now is not a very significant number. And what about your SL group uh, exposure? Will a large part of that be solved, uh, solved with the deal in Z Entertainment if that were to happen? That, that's exactly right. So uh, a large part of our exposure is actually uh, you know, collateralized by, uh, you know, uh, by the shares of the operating companies. Hmm. And we do believe that you know, when, when the resolution happens at a group level, hmm. uh, that will also lead to a substantial resolution of our own exposure. And what about DHFL? That's also a big po a point of worry. In fact, Moody's had uh, made comments on the bank uh, based on, their, uh, on your exposure to DHFL because DHFL had been downgraded. What is your thought process on that exposure? How risky could that be? So two aspects to, 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 to the entire DHFL exposure. First and foremost, that exposure is completely current on our books. So, you know, we need to take, uh, you know, that into account. Second is, I think on your channel itself, Nisha, I, a couple of Adhavan was there, uh, uh, you know, a few days back, talking about the fact that there is a large transaction that is coming, is, is underway, mm. uh, which would consummate in the next couple of weeks, mm. uh, which I think will also be the, uh, will unlock the resolution to, uh, to, the, to the, uh, the, the challenges that the company is currently right. facing. And I think should lead to a, an, a complete resolution of our exposure as well. Right. So as, when I look at it in the context of what's happening with respect to the stake sale over there, hmm. uh, I feel uh, relatively uh, secure about our exposure. How much too. time are you ready to give it? Because Radneet, I myself spoke to DHFL management. They have pushed the deadline. And that is a point of worry for their own investors. So will you be comfortable if in Q2 uh, there is a resol resolution if by the end of Q2, because there can be always a delay, will you be comfortable on that front? So my exposure is a completely current. So there's right. nothing that, you know, gives me fundamental uh, discomfort with respect to that. Hmm. Uh, as far as the resolution is concerned, as you know, it's a large resolution right. and it, it's a transformational resolution. And sometimes these things can take time. Uh, you know, there's the legalities around that. Hmm. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the regulatory approvals, et cetera. Hmm. So I wouldn't get too concerned, uh, you know, about the timelines getting stretched a little bit as long yeah. as the resolution eventually happens.